Have you ever received a request for planning or installing a charging infrastructure project? We have summarized for you seven points to be perfectly prepared for your next project. If this is interesting for you, stay tuned. Hello and welcome. My name is Christian Witt. I'm project manager for the charging station management tool Vicharm from Vector. We all know that planning a charging infrastructure can be very complex. Therefore, we have summarized for you seven points that can be discussed together with your customer to structure and plan your next charging infrastructure project. At the end, you will receive a checklist to tick off. Starting with the first point of our list. Before you start planning your charging infrastructure, you should ensure that your customer is authorized to build the charging infrastructure by you. For example, let them show you the proof of ownership. Coming to the second point of our list. Here we need the number of charging points that have to be built. This typically correlates with the number of electric vehicles. Here we can take the example of residential parking, where we have a one-to-one -one relation, uh, where we have one parking lot with an electric vehicle and one charging point. A little bit different when you have an employee parking, where we have more electric vehicles than charging points. Because typically not all of the employees are at work every day. And now we can start planning the charging infrastructure project. This can be split into two parts. The first part is how much power is available for your charging infrastructure. And the second part is how much power is consumed by the charging infrastructure. Coming to the first one. Here we need two parameters. On one hand, the grid connection limit. This is the limit for the full building, including the charging infrastructure. And the second is the maximum power consumption of the building. The difference of both is then how much power is available for our charging infrastructure. In our example, we have 50 kilowatts as a grid connection limit and 20 kilowatts reserved for our building. Results in 30 kilowatts for our charging infrastructure. In the second part, we have to calculate how much power is consumed by our charging infrastructure. Therefore, we need again two parameters. The first one is the number of charging points something that we have already asked for in step two. As a second parameter, we need how much power is consumed per charging point. And here we have different levels of charging stations. We can have 11 or 22 kilowatt AC charging station up to a DC charging station with 350 kilowatts. As an example, for residential parking or employee parking, we only need three to six kilowatts to charge typically, because on one hand we have very long idle times at the charging station and we don't need that much time to recharge the electric vehicle, because we have very short uh, trip distance typically. Back to our example, here we have three charging points with 11 kilowatts each. What we need now additionally is the information that uh, for planning a charging infrastructure we have to use the simultaneity factor of one, at least in Germany means we have to use the full power of the charging point for our calculation. Results in 33 kilowatts um, that is consumed by the charging points. And this exceeds uh, the grid connection limit. And this is also the typical use case or scenario that we see in the field, that the grid connection limit is not sufficient. And now you have two options. The first option is extending the grid connection. This can be quite costly is not implementable in each use case and also not across the board. And the second option is using a load management. The load management connects to each charging point and takes care that the specific limit in our scenario 30 kilowatts will not be exceeded by the charging points. If this would be the, uh, the case, the charging station management system reduces the power per charging point. And now coming to the sixth point of our list. Ask your customer if there is already the plan to expand the charging infrastructure. If this is the case, use a higher grid connection limit or if you use the load management, ensure that the load management system is charging station independent. Here the keyword is OCPP, so capable to connect to different brands and models. And now, coming to the last point of our list, ask your customer how the access to the charging points should be managed. Here we have the possibilities to enable or disable each charging point manually or using authorization methods like RFID cards or hardwareless methods like auto-charge and plug-and-charge. 
With these seven points, you are now well prepared to plan your next charging infrastructure project. In our next video, we discuss the pros and cons of either choosing a load management tool or expanding the grid connection. Thanks for watching and goodbye. If you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to contact us. If you don't want to miss any of our new videos, please subscribe our channel and hit the bell. Thanks for watching and goodbye.